Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Actistec, Dana Springs, Claiborne Farm, Daily Racing Tour, Darby Dan Farm, EmpireCityVets.com, Equine Equipment Safe, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, PBI Bank, Quill and Leather Attack, Spendthrift Farm, Supermate Equine, and Windstar Fund. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week featuring 10 stakes from 7 different tracks including a record setting performance in the Grade 2 King Edward Stakes at Woodbine and a photo finish in the Rich Ohio Derby from Thistledown. We begin with sprinters at Parks Racing in the Donald Levine Memorial Handicap. AP Indian, the even money favorite, Keith Jones picks up the call. The battle joined between Stall Walking Dude and AP Indian. Those two with some separation now. AP Indian the outside, Stall Walking Dude on the inside. AP Indian comes off the turn, puts it back in front. Stall Walking Dude try to hang tough down on the inside. Fabulous Kid now making a late run on the outside. AP Indian beginning to slow the edge away. Stall Walking Dude trying to stay on. Fabulous Kid late run on the outside. AP Indian deep stretches moved away to a length and a half lead and AP Indian has done it. AP Indian takes the Levine by two. AP Indian, the winner officially by two and a quarter over Stall Walking Dude. Daniel Centeno up in 123 and 2, a 104 bar speed figure. That's back to back stakes wins for AP Indian, who was last seen taking the decathlon stakes at Monmouth Park. The veteran sprinter has won three of four starts this season for trainer Arno Delacour. The five year old gelding by Indian Charlie out of the stakes winning AP Indy mare Ender's sister was bred in Kentucky by his owner, Green Lantern Stables. AP Indian has earned $200,000. DRF Breeding, home of the new Sire Powered Results Tool. Access race results from North America. Visit drf.com slash breeding for additional information. To Belmont Park for sprinting fillies and mares in the grade three Bed of Roses handicap. Morning line favorite La Verdad was scratched, leaving Dame Dorothy as the three to five starting choice. Larry Comas has the call. Dame Dorothy just cruising along up front here through a soft half mile of 47 and 3 fifth seconds. Street Story and Jose Lescano are going to make her work now and the two of them will turn for home together. Street Story and Dame Dorothy and they turn it on at the top of the lane. Street Story on the outside. Dame Dorothy down at the rail. They are nose to nose. A furlong to go. Nothing separates them. Dame Dorothy fights on. Street Story on the outside. There's seven lengths clear of the rest of the field. Dame Dame Dorothy and Street Story come down to the line, and Dame Dorothy did it in the Bed of Roses. Odds on favorite Dame Dorothy fights off Street Story by a length and a half for a 1-2 finish by Keeneland Sells graduates. The winner under high weight of 123 pounds and Javier Castellano in 124 flat. That's seven wins and nine starts for Dame Dorothy, who was coming off a victory in the Grade 1 Humana Distaff on Derby Day at Churchill Downs. The four-year-old filly by Bernardini was bred in Pennsylvania by Dairy Meeting Farm and was a $390,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trained by Todd Plutcher, Dame Dorothy has earned nearly $710,000 for Chef Bobby Flay. Phillies and mares at Delaware Park in the Grade 3 Obeya Stakes. Joint return the 5-2 favorite. John Curran has the call. Half went in 49 and 2. Very, very slow fractions for this bunch into the turn. Natalie Victoria and on the outside, Montana Native now joining that one. Followed by Luna Time. Long shot making a big run. Then comes Blue Violet toward the inside of horses. Fortune Pearl has the rail. Up on the outside, Sea Shadow. Followed by Perique and dropping back as they make their way around the bend. It's Montana Native and Luna Time going at it. Blue Violet now angles to the outside for clear sailing. Down on the inside, Natalie Victoria, but the pace has been slow and the front runners still have a lot left the six and 13 and one montana native and luna time bidding for the big upset here comes Fortune Pearl kicking in now from the back. Joint return is flying, but it may be too little and too late. Luna time got the jump and Luna time will upset in the Obeya. Luna time wins it. Joint return closing well for second the Montana native and Fortune Pearl. 15 to 1 Luna Time by Spinthrift Farm Stallion Malibu Moon takes it by three links over joint return. Forrest Boyce up in 149 and 2. 
The first stakes victory for Luna Time, who was making her first start since finishing third in the Maryland Racing Media Stakes in February. The four-year-old filly was bred in Maryland by her owners, Dorsey Brown and Richard Palmer. The third winner on the card for trainer Graham Motion, Luna Time has earned $195,000. More racing coming up, but first here's the upcoming schedule in the Breeders' Cup Win and You're In Challenge Series. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with two-year-olds featured in this segment. We begin at Woodbine with the Victoria Stakes on turf. Conquest City Girl, the 9-5 to five favorite on debut. Robert Geller picks up the call. Hollywood Hideaway by one. Bellavo on the outside in second. Three furlongs to run. Two lengths away. Third, I love Beef Stew and Dragon Bay. And here comes the filly. Conquest City Girl. She's running on well as they come for the lane. Top of the stretch in the Victoria Stakes. And still in front. Hollywood Hideaway. Down the centre. Bellavo. Conquest City Girl. And on the inside, Dragon Bay. Coming on after this leader, Bellavo. Hollywood Hideaway still in front. Bellavo is there. And down on the outside coming is Dragon Bay. The leader is now Bellavo on the outside. Hollywood Hideaway is out of gas and Bellavo in front getting a bit tight but Bellavo from Hollywood Hideaway to the wire Bellavo just in a photo it's tight it was Bellavo first under the wire by a head over Hollywood Hideaway but for bumping Hollywood Hideaway during the stretch run when jockey Rico De Silva briefly dropped a rein and again near the finish line Bellavo was demoted to second by the stewards the victory awarded to Hollywood Hideaway and Luis Contreras. Time of the race, 109 and 3. The Barbara Mitchell trainee gets a stakes victory in his career debut. The Colt by Zensational was bred in Kentucky by his owner Bruce Lunsford and is a half-brother to Canadian Horse of the Year, Aravale. Hollywood Hideaway has earned $61,000. Derby Dan Stallion dialed in, the grade one Florida Derby winner and an early Kentucky Derby favorite by AP Indy's only horse of the year, Mineshaft. Watch for dialed in's first crop of yearlings hitting the sales this summer, including six cataloged at the Facing Gifton July sale in Lexington. Next, the Santa Anita Juvenile Stakes. Impressive maiden winner Dub Dub Watson, the two to one favorite. Frank Miramati picks up the call. It's Mrazek by a head to found money second. Dub Dub Watson three quarters back, three wide, perfect trip third. Chingon to the bone is outside of him. Pitstone Steel is in fifth. He's got four to make up, and Swiss Minister is the trailer. Found money puts his neck in front at the top of the stretch. Mrazek going right with him. These two have dominated the entire race. Chingon to the bone on the outside third. They're in the final furlong. Mrazek. Found Money. Found Money puts his nose in front. Mrazek at the rail will battle him, but now it's Found Money edging clear past the 16th pole. Found Money. Mrazek takes up a little as they run 1-2, the stablemates. Found Money wins the Santa Anita Juvenile. Found Money defeats his stablemate Mrazek by a length and three quarters. Corey Nakatani up in 104 and 1. Both runners are trained by Doug O'Neill for owner and breeder Redham Racing, and both colts are by current leading juvenile sire Square Eddy. Found Money was the winner, and Morazic ran fourth in a cowbred maiden race over the track on debut. Found Money has earned $108,000. For all your insurance needs, a specialist at Jerry Parks Insurance Group is there to assist you with 40 years of exceptional coverage. Look for Jerry Parks, John Cassie, or Kelly Weeks at the upcoming yearling sales. Two-year-old fillies at Santa Anita in the Land of Lucy Stakes. First out, maiden winner Miss Gridley, the two-to-one favorite. Once again, here's Frank Miramati. Miss Gridley cruising around the far turn, leads by a length and a half, and doing it sweetly. Alien Giant is coming after her from second. Sam Bamza Jammin. She's a classic getting into contention right there. And Faith Pacer, they're at the top of the stretch. Miss Gridley's in front. Alien Giant trying to get after her under left-handed urging in the center of the track. Here comes right there with good-looking strides. And right there is gobbling them up like Pac-Man eating dots. Right there goes right on by. And look at her just stride out for fun. Right there in Kent Sormo. Stylish. Right there, draws off to defeat Alien Giant by four and three quarter lengths. Kit DeSormo aboard the Keenan Sells graduate in 105 and 1. Runner up to Alien Giant in a Santa Anita maiden test on debut. Right there turns the tables and the Landalusi. 
The filly by Escondria was bred in Kentucky by Stone Street Thoroughbred Holdings. It was a $55,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trained by the winning jockey's brother Keith DeSormo, right there has earned $86,000 for Big Chief Racing. Spinthrift Farm congratulates the connections of Malibu Moon's three-year-old colt, Mr. Z, and the Warriors Reward First Crop colt, Tin Cinder. The Kentucky Derby runners were one-two finishers just a nose apart in last Saturday's $500,000 Ohio Derby. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with a photo finish at the half-million-dollar Ohio Derby coming up in this segment. Three-year-old stakes action is presented by BC2A Paste. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Paste. We begin with fillies at Santa Anita in the Grade 2 Summertime Oaks. Stellar win the 2-5 favorite. Frank Miramati has the call. Down the back stretch, the leader, Conquest Curl Girl. Could not be going slower up top. Leads three parts of a lane. Terrace Tango on the stretch out second. At the rail, it's sheer pleasure with stellar wind. Outside of them, Scat Means Go moves into contention. Scat Means Go is four wide, and now stellar wind and her move together. They sprint into the far turn. Tara's Tango puts her nose in front. Stellar wind is going with her. Conquest Curl Girl at the rail. It was a brief bid for Scat Means Go. She's dropping back. Sheer pleasure takes fourth. A quarter of a mile to run. Stellar win has covered the most real estate on her home track. She's asked to go. Terrace Tango in between them. At the rail, Conquest Curl Girl, there's an eighth of a mile to go. Stellar win will have to work. Terrace Tango's very tough, getting a Hall of Fame ride there. Nose and nose with a 16th to go. Terrace Tango, Stellar win. Stellar win or Terrace Tango. Stellar win, Terrace Tango. Stellar win by a nose. Odds on favorite Stellar Wynn gets up to defeat Terra's Tango by a nose while conceding five pounds to the runner-up. Triple Crown winning jockey Victor Espinosa aboard in 142-2. and two. Impressive winner of the Grade 1 Santa Anita Oaks in April, the John Sadler trainee back home after finishing fourth as the favorite in the Grade 1 Kentucky Oaks. The filly by Curlin was bred in Kentucky by Stone Street Thoroughbred Holdings. An $86,000 Maryland Cell yearling, she was purchased privately by Horonis Racing after she broke her maiden by eight and three quarters as a two-year-old at Laurel Park. Stellar Wind has earned $493,000. Stellar Wind paid two eighty dollars to win and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. To Monmouth Park for the Grade 3 Pegasus Stakes, Mr. Jordan, the two-to-one favorite, Ken Workington has the call. Trying to take them all the way is Texton, leading it by a length and a quarter off a half of 47 and 4. It's Texton, and now Mr. Jordan makes his move on the outside. Adam, here comes Chippet, who starts to pick it up midway on the final turn. Instant replay is being asked for more, and good pick. Nick comes three wide, but he's got four and a half to make up here as it's Mr. Jordan and Paco Lopez on the verge. 111 and 4, they're in the stretch of the Pegasus. Mr. Jordan drifts out here, and it's Mr. Jordan trying to fight back on the inside is Texton then good picnic is a distant third down to the wire in the Pegasus it's Mr. Jordan fighting back Texton on the inside Texton Mr. Jordan and Texton hit the line together Mr. Jordan takes the photo by a head over a determined Texton Paco Lopez aboard the two-time OBS sales graduate the Florida bred clocked in 142 and 3 Mr. Jordan back at Monmouth Park, where he broke his maiden by six and three-quarter lengths, first asking at two. The Eddie Plesa trainee went on to win a pair of stakes at Gulfstream Park West to cap off an undefeated juvenile campaign. The colt by Ken Thoros was second in two stakes appearances at Gulfstream Park this season. A $63,000 OBS August drilling turned a $155,000 OBS April two-year-old Mr. Jordan has earned $253,000 for David Mellon, Leon Elman, and Lori Plisa. The Pegasus winner was bred in Florida by Philip and David Matthews. Florida breads, race him or chase him. To Thistledown for the $500,000 Ohio Derby, Divining Rod, the two to one favorite, Matt Hook has the call. Mr. Z takes the early lead. It's Mr. Z and Tensender is right behind him, racing second. 30 silver pieces to the inside of Divining Rod. He's between rivals. Whiskey tickets to his outside. He's racing three wide. And the trailing trio, Far White, Roar Story, and Divining Rod. That threesome just five lengths off the lead. 
and Warse, and it is. Mr. Z establishing in a nice early tempo here. Mr. Z just in front of 10 sender. On the inside, 30 silver pieces third. Divining Rod is keen to go on right now. He's advancing between rivals. Whiskey Ticket is between, is on the outside, racing fifth, about three off the lead. And we come back to War Story and Deck of Brisk, and far right's only five lengths behind. Hit the far turn, three furlongs to go in the Ohio Derby, and Divining Rod now challenges Mr. Z. Mr. Z has something left, and Divining Rod is inside. These two together, 10 senders back there, four lengths behind. 30 silver pieces there as well. Whiskey Ticket is coming under pressure, and it's War Story, Deck of Brisk, and far right. And it's Mr. Z and Divining Rod, those two together, and 10 senders now a closer third, top of the stretch. Divining Rod a short lead. Mr. Z right back at him, and here's Ten Sender on the outside. A furlong to go, and Mr. Z right back at Dividing Rod. Ten Sender trying to pick this pair off from third to sixteenth to go. Mr. Z Dividing Rod, and here's Ten Sender. Mr. Z Ten Sender tight. And here's another look at that photo finish. As Divining Rod starts to fade, it's Mr. Z regaining the lead in the middle of the track under Joe Bravo. But Ten Sender and Manuel Franco are challenging on the outside. Both runners toting 118 pounds. And Mr. Z holds on to take the photo by a nose. Race favorite Divining Rod only a head back in the show spot. Mr. Z is by Spendthrift Farm Stallion Malibu Moon, Tin Cinder by Spendthrift Stallion Warriors Reward. The Keeneland Sells graduate clocked in 143-3. and three. Making his second start in the colors of Brad Kelly's Calumet Farm, Mr. Z records the second victory of his career and snaps a 14-race losing streak. The D. Wayne Lucas trainee placed in five graded stakes at two, and was third in three stakes at Oakland Park this year, including the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby won by American Pharaoh. But he suffered double-digit defeats in both the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness Stakes. The Colt was bred in Kentucky by Richard Maynard and was a $135,000 yearling. Mr. Z is our $997,000. Coming up, an up-and-coming turf star at Woodbine. Time now for the Feature Race of the Week, presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Woodbine for turf milers in the Grade 2 King Edward Stakes. Ex-Caper, the 9-5 to five favorite, here's the call by Robert Geller. Wayne Racing in the King Edward Stakes, a great start. Soon after, though, dropping out to last is Conquest Top Gun. Racing out in front, Stack Deck toward the outside shows the way and gets from the outside towards the rail pretty easily. And Stack Deck by a length. Escaper running up in second. In third placing early on is Irie and a half a length to Platinum Glory. They're the top four. Right behind them, Tower of Texas is snuck up on the inside, but towards the back, Conquest Top Gun is three wide. And in the centre is Best Bard, fairly tightly bunched. As they head down the back stretch, chasing Stack Deck, Stack Stack Deck by one. Escape has had a nice trail in second. One away third Irie. Platinum Glory on the outside. Tower of Texas is four off the pace. The rail making a move up on the inside. Best Bar coming between them. And four wide is Conquest Top Gun. Racing with the lead remains Stack Deck as they go to the half. Stack Deck by one. Escape are in second. They've got away. They've opened up a lead of four lengths. Platinum Glory around the outside of Irie. Conquest Top Gun is next. Tower of Texas back to second last. And Best Bar is last. Escape tags this leader Stack Deck. The whip is out. Stack Deck in front. And as they come for home in the King Edward, Stack Deck and Escaper are well ahead. Back in third, Platinum Glory. Tower of Texas has a run up the inside, if good enough. Down the lane and still in front. Stack Deck on the outside. Escaper. Tower of Texas up the rail, finishing well. And behind them, Platinum Glory drifting out here is Stack Deck. Escape has gone to the front. Tower of Texas on the inside, running on them. Platinum Glory. And Tower of Texas has come right through and bulldozed away. And Tower of Texas has been much the best. Tower of Texas wins again. Tower of Texas takes the King Edward. In his first start on turf, Tower of Texas gets a dream run along the rail to defeat Platinum Glory by two and three quarter lengths. A one two finish by Keenan Sells graduates. Eurico da Silva aboard in stakes record time of 132 and 2. Third in the plate trial a year ago, Tower of Texas was defeated soundly in the 2014 Queen's Plate. His connections decided to give him the rest of his three-year-old season off and gelded him prior to his current campaign. And the Roger Adfield trainee is undefeated in three starts this season. The four-year-old gelding by Street Sense was bred in Ontario by Anderson Farms and Rod Ferguson. Tower of Texas has earned nearly $297,000 for Tom Van Meter III and Scott Dilworth. 
The future grated steak sweater was consigned by Anderson Farms to the 2012 Keeneland January sale, where he was purchased by Scott and Evan Dilworth for $195,000. Grade 2 King Edward steak sweater, Tower of Texas, the Keeneland sales graduate of the week. Eureka De Silva with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horsefans, the safest way to the winner's circle. We'll have the Grade 1 Gold Cup from Santa Anita and much more next week here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week has been presented by Actistem, Adina Springs, Claiborne Farm, Daily Racing Farm, Darby Dan Farm, EmpireCityBets.com, Equine Equipment Saving, Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, Jerry Parks Insurance Group, Keeneland, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, Paul Miller Ford, PBI Bank, Quillen Leather and Tack, Spendthrift Farm, Sucremate Equine, and Windstar Farm. Online at TBreadWeek.com.